Richard in Sydney, Australia writes to me. Hey, Paul. Hey, Richard. Firstly, thank you for the vlogs. I, you know, I, I write a blog every day, the Paul's Post, but I never think about these as video blogs, but there you go. Thanks for that. <laughs> they're entertaining and they're educational. You've taught me a great deal. Well, my pleasure, sir. The question is this, with all the advancements in switched power supplies, why don't you and other manufacturers power your amplifiers with them? They weigh far less than the toroids and I imagine they can be scaled more easily in terms of power requirements. Is the answer simply noise or separation from the mains or am I missing something? Many thanks, please keep the vlogs coming. Okay, well, here we are, vlogging away. <laughs> Switch mode power supplies. Okay, let's talk a little bit about power supplies. We have always said, years, little more is important in performance of an amplifier than its power supply. In essence, what you're doing is taking the AC out of the wall or out of your power plant AC regenerator, however you get the AC in, converting it to direct current, DC, which is like tall battery voltage, and then presenting that voltage in as steady a form as you can to the amplifier. Now that amplifier is taking that voltage from the power supply and it's modulating it. It's sending it out to your speakers, to your whatever, right? If it's a preamp, however it is. You're, modulating the power supply. So that voltage that you are modulating and converting into what we hear, sound, it's pretty critical. The better, the steadier, the lower impedance, all that good stuff that that voltage is, the better it's gonna sound when that properly designed amplifier that is modulating that power supply is gonna send it out to your speakers. Okay. So for years, we have always built oversized power supplies. So if we needed a toroid, a toroid is a transformer that basically takes one voltage out of the wall and converts it to another voltage that the power supply wants. And it does it magnetically, two coils of wire, and each coil of wire, the primary, which is the input, the secondary, which is the output, they magnetically couple. You put this in, you get that out, okay? There's your transformer. And all of them have it, whether it's a switch mode power supply or whether it's a standard power supply, whatever we're going to call that, a linear power supply. Okay. And for years, if we needed a toroid that big, we put one in that big. That's what we do at PS Audio because we learned long ago, the bigger the power supply, the lower its impedance, the better it's going to sound. So switch mode power supplies. I will tell you that up until a few years ago, we would never have considered using a switch mode power supply in one of our amplifiers. They just, they weren't good enough. They didn't have enough energy storage. They didn't have low enough output impedance. They didn't have the characteristics that we looked for in a linear power supply. But today, there's a whole crop of them from manufacturers that you've never heard of to some of the cool stuff like from Hypex, Ice, those kinds of manufacturers make power supplies, switch mode power supplies that are amazing, that take it beyond what we can do with a linear supply. For example, we can regulate the supply. We can provide more power than we possibly could use, like a 1200 watt switch mode power supply in a 300 watt amplifier. That's the kind of thing that we do at PS Audio. Bigger is better. And someday, someday, yes, we'll switch over to, not to make a pun, switch mode power supplies. <laughs> but it is something in, in, in the back of Paul's old head here. And maybe someday, I'm, actually I'm sure, someday you're gonna see that. All right, thanks for the question. Take it easy.